All right, this is Kelly and Jonathan's Renaissance Art Gallery. So, the beginnings of the Renaissance uh, were fueled by a sudden surge in interest in classical learnings and values, and there was a major decline in the feudal system, and there was a growth in commerce, which also defined the Renaissance period. Uh, the Renaissance began in the cities of northern Italy, especially Florence. This is because northern Italy uh, Italian cities had many merchants who were wealthy from trading. Therefore, those cities had enough money to support the new era. Venice, Florence, Genoa, and other cities are um, representative of this. So, Renaissance era affected European cultures, culture in many ways. The big influences of Renaissance can be divided into two big columns, um, exploration and art. For exploration, exploration of the Renaissance was based on confident, ambitious, curious, and eager for individual glory, which is like individualism. So there are a couple of factors that encouraged exploration from the Renaissance era. First of all, spice trading of Italian merchants made a lot of money, money, and encouraged other other national. Um, traders to seek more sea routes to reach Asia. Second reason was for missionary. Even the power of Catholic Church decreased some of the European desire to spread Christianity, especially Spanish and Portugal wanted to convert Muslims in Africa into Christians. Lastly, inventions such as carabel and compass helped sailors in many ways. The great invention of the era, printing press, encouraged exploration as well. Printing press generalized books so that people could encounter more books about another side of the world, Asia. For example, Christopher Columbus had to read about Asia and wanted to explore there. With support of Spanish Queen Isabella's permission, he sailed across the Atlantic. Long story short, he found Af America instead of India. After the found foundation of America, the exploration rapidly increased. The picture in this is map of the Europe. Oh no, uh, map of Europe from 1500s. <laughs> and another big influence is art. Renaissance art was very different with medieval art. Here are two art pieces. One is from medieval era and one is from Renaissance. As you can see from these two similar paintings, there was large contrast in shape, size, depth, and even color. <clears throat> During the Middle Ages, there were many changes. Early art pieces were typically restricted to being purely religious. They were seen in the form of manuscripts, mosaics, and paintings in churches. The first image shown is portraying the Madonna and Child. The painting is very colorless and dull looking, as was typical of the time. The hands were drawn skewed and rigid, and the faces, regardless of age, were quirky, quirky and adult-like. The second, uh, uh, there might not, yeah, the second image uh, depicts the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, surrounded by angels and saints, along with family and torturers. This image has very little depth, but is actually showing contrast, more contrast than most paintings of that time, which is starting to show the slow progression in art with the creation and idea of depth. So there are a couple um, characteristic of Renaissance art. Renaissance art divided into two parts, those preserved from past or those invented. There are three distinct um, characteristics in Renaissance art from past. As we mentioned, Renaissance is rebirth of Greek and Roman art, so many art pieces were based on those, those civilizations. First, the architecture style became very similar with Greek and Roman. Second, the value of the humanism and individualism arose again. People had a general, general new outlook on life no longer was art solely for the glory of God, now it should, could be simply for the love of art. This idea was originally from Greek philosophy, Aristotle. Renaissance people did glorify God and drove 
religiously, they just didn't do it as much as before. Third, realism arose during Renaissance. Because of humanists, people pursued drawing of Renaissance hum uh, realistic human. <laughs> Thus, most of the Renaissance art are human anatomically right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, <laughs> so these are the two um, architecture. One is from one is Saint Peter's Basilica. Oh. Um, and uh, the Basilica shows the influence of Roman and Greek uh, architecture. Um, uh, it's kind of like like a Roman uh, temples and ancient Roman temples and the other picture um, uh, is of Saint wait no let's, um, what is this other picture uh, I don't know well this the, the Basilica shows uh, influence of Roman and Greek architecture um, other things were St. Bartholomew um, in modern Renaissance paintings, um, and it kind of throws back to medieval uh, church styles, uh, painting styles. It kept the characteristics of the past with dull colors, um, and also the statues of David by Michelangelo were modern Renaissance, and uh, uh, David's body was, you know, idealized the idealized human body and it was anatomically correct um also we all know who made this statue and it's is one of the things that uh, humanists artists did uh, they couldn't feel the need to hide their name um, and attribute it to god which is you know more humanism and both pieces of, of art are anatomically correct when which is another factor of the renaissance period So, um, the Renaissance, there are also some new developments Renaissance artists made with new medium, oil paint, and new technique perspective. Renaissance art could reach further for the future. This is Last Supper, Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. This, it is famous as Leonardo and Michelangelo's <laughs> competition. Both were offered a wall of government's palace to paint famous Florentine fresco. In this drawing, he used two things that represent the future. Leonardo da Vinci used his te new technique for material, which is oil paint. Traditionally, Italian artist has used egg yolk tempera for the medium. It was messy, smelly, it dries fast, and made many cracks. Leonardo um, discovered a more, more discovered more belt versatile colors with oil paint. He could be built up in layers to add staff and tone. He also could paint over to over to cover mistakes. <laughs> Another artistic revolution was vanishing point. So as you can see on this page Vanish point, he used one point perspective that all the lines covering at one vanishing point is so Jesus's right eye. This technique taught how to depict, depict three-dimensional drawing on two-dimensional. So another um, drawing that I'm going to use for um, Renaissance future is Holy Trinity by Masakio. He, it has perspective technique in it. Aka um, vanishing point technique. It is stored at stored at Santa Maria Novella. Masakio is known as first artist who used perspective in art. Brunelleschi, art architect and founder of vanishing points and perspective, taught his friend Masakio about his foundation to create illusion and depth. Masakio used not only vanishing points but also a atmospheric perspective that subtly dim diminished colors as the distance between eyes and picture increased. And he is also famous for putting himself in the drawing just like other humanist artists did. So here's the Holy Trinity by Masakiyo. 
and this is how it works. This is the focal point, and he made people feel like this picture, but actually it's on two-dimensional wall. In conclusion, Renaissance was the era blast of development. It preserved ancient civilization and improved their skills based on it. This is all we have. Thank you.